Welcome everyone. In this particular video, we are going to talk about the basics of quantum computing. The story of quantum computers begins in 1981 with Richard Feynman, probably the most famous physicist of his time at a conference on physics and computation at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology asked the question, can we simulate physics on a computer? The answer was not exactly or more precisely not all of the physics. One of the branches of physics is quantum mechanics which studies the laws of nature on the scale of individual atom and particles. If we try to simulate quantum mechanics on a computer, we run into a fundamental problem. The full description of quantum physics has so many variables that we cannot keep track of all of them on a computer. If one particle can be described by two variables, then to describe the most general state of n particle, we need to power n variables, then think about 100 particles. So the problem keeps here. The problem was nothing new and many physicists already knew that. But Feynman took it one step further. He asked whether he could turn this problem into something positive. If we cannot simulate quantum physics on a computer, maybe we can build a quantum mechanical computer which could be better than an ordinary computer. So this question was asked by the famous physicist of that time. Yet over the next few years, almost nothing happened. The idea of quantum computer was so new and so unusual that nobody knew how to start thinking about it. But Feynman kept telling his ideas to others again and again. He managed to inspire a small number of people who started thinking what would a quantum computer would look like and what would it be able to do. In the last decade, research in quantum mechanics has been moving into a new stage. Earlier, the goal of researcher was to understand the law of nature according to quantum system function. In many situations, this has been successfully achieved. The new goal is to manipulate and control quantum systems so that they behave in a prescribed way. So this brings the spirit of research closer to computer science. Experiments in quantum physics are now creating artificial physical systems that obey the law of quantum mechanics but do not exist in nature under normal condition. An example of such a quantum system is quantum computer. In this video, I have tried to answer a series of basic questions regarding quantum computing. Like, what is a quantum computer? What is a qubit? What is superposition? What is entanglement? What is decoherence? Quantum supremacy? And why do we need them? Why these computers are faster? What are the different types of quantum computer? And where these computers are likely to be most useful? Quantum computing is an area of study focused on the development of computer-based technologies centered around the principles of quantum theory. Quantum theory explains the nature and behavior of energy and matter on quantum level. It uses combination of bits to perform specific computational tasks, all at a much higher efficiency than their classical counterpart. Quantum machines promise to outstrip even the most capable of today's and tomorrow's supercomputers. They won't wipe out the conventional computer, though. Using a classical machine will still be easiest and most economical solution for tackling most problems. With this note, we define a quantum computer to be a machine that performs calculation based on laws of quantum mechanics, which is behavior of particle at subatomic timeline of quantum computing is given in the next two consecutive slides. So Richard Feynman states the possibility of using quantum ethics for computation in the year 1959 and he urged the world to build a quantum computer in the year 1981. An international group of six scientists show a perfect quantum teleportation is possible in the year 1993. And in 1994, Peter Shaw discovered a quantum algorithm. And in the year 2009, Yale created the first solid state quantum processor, a two qubit superconducting chip. In 2011, scientists from Australia and Japan made a breakthrough in quantum 
teleportation successfully transferring quantum data with good transmission integrity. In the year 2011, D-Wave uh, announced first commercial quantum annealer and in November 2012, the first quantum teleportation from one macroscopic object to another was reported. In the year 2013, Google announced that it was launching the Quantum AI Lab. And in the year 2014, Edward Snowden showed the NSA is running $79.7 million research program titled Penetrating Hard Targets to develop a quantum computer capable of breaking vulnerable encryption. In the year 2015, NASA publicly displayed the world's first fully operational quantum computer, D-Wave Systems. In the year 2016, IBM Research announced that for the first time ever, it is making quantum computing available to the members of the public via cloud. In the year 2017, IBM announced an industry first initiative called IBM Q to build commercially available universal quantum computing system. And in 2017 October, Again, IBM research scientists successively broke the 49 qubit simulation barrier. In the later 2017 and early 2018, IBM, Intel, Google each reported test testing quantum processor containing 50, 49, and 72 qubits. In the year June 2018, Intel began testing a silicon based spin qubit processor. In the year 2018, uh, IonQ reported that its machine could be built as large as 160 qubits. And in 2019 October, Google announced it had achieved quantum supremacy, making huge milestone in artificial intelligence. Today's computer use a stream of electrical or optical pulses representing ones or zeros called bits. Everything from your tweets and emails to your iTunes songs and your YouTube videos are essentially long strings of these binary digits. Quantum computers on the other hand use qubits which are typically subatomic particles such as electrons or photons. And we define a qubit to be a mechanical analog of a classical bit. So qubit is a two-level quantum system where the two basis qubit states are usually written as zero and one vectors. Typically, a qubit is a entangled pair of photon, electrons or nuclei. The entangled part is the spin of the particle, either spin up or spin down. Qubits are represented by ket vector form. A bit of data is represented by a single atom that is in one of the two states denoted by zero vector and one vector. So a single bit of this form is known as a qubit. The physical implementation of a qubit would use the two energy levels of an atom, an excited state representing one vector and a ground state representing zero which is clearly given in this diagram. Think of a qubit as an electron in a magnetic field. The electron spin may be either in alignment with the field which is known as spin up state or opposite to the field which is known as spin down state. Changing the electron spin from one state to another is achieved by using a pulse of energy such as from a laser. If only half of the unit of energy is used and the particle is isolated from all external influences and then enters a superposition of states, behaving as if it were in both states simultaneously. And we define superposition as a phenomenon in which a qubit can be in state 0 and 1 or in linear combination of both states. So qubits can be superposition of both the states 0 and 1. When a qubit is measured, the qubit will collapse to one of its eigenstates and the measured value will reflect the state. For example, when a qubit is, the, is in a superposition state of equal weights, a measurement will make it collapse to one of its two basis states, 0 and 1, with an equal probability of 50%. Quantum superposition is fundamentally dif different from superposing classical waves. 
a quantum computer consisting of n qubits can exist in a superposition of 2 power n states starting from 0 to 1. In contrast, playing a musical sound with all different frequency can only give a superpos superposition of n frequency. Adding classical waves scales in linear where the superposition of quantum state is exponential. One of the counterintuitive phenomena in quantum physics is entanglement. A pair or group of particles is entangled when the quantum state of each particle cannot be described independently of the quantum state of the other particles. When two qubits are entangled, there exists a special connection between them and this will become clear from the results of the measurement. For example, two particles are created in such a way that the total spin of the system is zero. If the spin of one particle is measured on a certain axis and found to be counterclockwise, then it is guaranteed that the measurement of the spin of the other particle will show a spin to be clockwise. This seems strange because it appears that one of the entangled particles feels that a measurement is performed on the other entangled particle and knows that uh, what the outcome should be, but this is not the case. This happens without any information exchange between the entangled particle. They could even be billions of miles away from each other and this entanglement would be still present. Quantum computers promise exponential speed up in solving certain types of problems by using quantum principles like superposition and entanglement. But the use of quantum states also leave the quantum computer much more vulnerable to errors than a classical computer would be. These errors arise from decoverance, a process in which the environment interact with the qubits uncontrollably changing their quantum state and causing information stored the quantum computer to be lost. That's why researchers do their best to protect the qubits from the outside world in those supercooled fridges and vacuum chambers. An algorithm is a quantum algorithm when it can be performed on a quantum computer. In principle, it is possible to run all classic algorithms on a quantum computer. However, the term quantum algorithm is applied to algorithm of which at least one of the steps is distinctly quantum using superposition and entanglement. Shore algorithm shows that a quantum computer is capable of factoring very large numbers in polynomial time. So this algorithm depend on modular arithmetic, quantum parallelism, quantum Fourier transform. Not all quantum computers are equal. There are different types of quantum computers based on their performance. They are quantum annealing computer, analog quantum computer, and universal quantum computer. Quantum annealing computer is the least powerful and more restrictive form of quantum computer, and it is easier to build, yet only can perform one specific function. The consensus is that the quantum annealer has no no known advantages over conventional computing. So if you see the application, uh, it is used in optimization problems and the computational power is very low which is very similar to the traditional computers and this is easiest to build. And the bottom line behind this quantum annealing computer is a very specialized form of quantum computing with unproven advantages over conventional computing. So G-Wave is one example. Google claimed a particular problem was solved 3,000 time, 3, times faster than a conventional computer in a demo. Analog quantum computer will be able to simulate complex quantum interaction that are intractable for any known conventional computer. It is conjectured that the analog computer will contain between 50 to 100 bits. So the application of these analog quantum computer, uh, they are used in quantum chemistry, material science, optimization problems, sampling and quantum dynamics. And the computational power is medium and millions of times faster than a conventional computer on special problems. 
and it is moderately hard to build. And the most likely form of quantum computing that will first show a quantum speed up over conventional computing. This would happen within the next five years. Then coming to universal quantum computer, this is the most powerful, the most general and hardest to build. It poses a tremendous number of technical challenges. Only about 8000 is estimated to crack RSA 2048. So the generality of application is secure computing machine learning, cryptography searching and all analog quantum computing. And the computational power is very high, many trillions of times faster than conventional computer. And it is extremely hard to build a quantum, universal quantum computer. This is the holy grail of quantum computing, offering the potential to be exponentially faster than the traditional computer for a number of problems. What is quantum supremacy? The point at which the quantum computer can complete a mathematical calculation that is demonstrably beyond the reach of even the most powerful supercomputer is known as quantum supremacy. And Google reported they have achieved quantum supremacy in the year 2019. Why do we need quantum computers? Because supercomputers are in that super. Until now, we have relied on supercomputer to solve most problems. But we define supercomputers as very large classical computer, often with thousands of CPU and GPU cores. They aren't very good at solving certain types of problems, which seems very easy at first glance. In fact, the qubits can be entangled makes a quantum computer more powerful than a classical computer and with the information stored in the superposition, some problems can be solved exponentially faster. Why these quantum computers are faster? One promising quantum algorithm called Groover Search makes quantum computers faster. It is a quantum algorithm for searching an unsorted database with n entries in O of n by 2 items and using O of log n storage space. On a classical computer, you would have to check n by 2 items on an average or in some cases you need to check all n. Using reverse search in quantum computer you would find the item around checking roughly root, to, root n of them. This represents a remarkable increase in the processing efficiency and the time is also consumed. For example, if you wanted to find one item in a list of 1 trillion and each item took one microsecond to check. This job was done by a classical computer. It took about one week, whereas a quantum computer completed this job in a second. Quantum computers are useful in various fields from material science to pharmaceutical research. They are used to simulate the behavior of matter down to the molecular level. And they are also used in the simulation of chemical composition of electrical vehicle batteries to help find new ways to improve their performance. Pharmaceutical companies employ quantum computers to analyze and compare compounds that could lead to the creation of new drugs. These machines are good at optimization problem because they can crunch through vast number of potential sol solution extremely fast and they are used to accelerate uh, artificial intelligence. So Airbus, for instance, is using them to help calculate the most fuel efficient ascent and descent paths for aircrafts. Volkswagen uh, has unveiled a service that calculates the optimal routes for buses and taxis in order to minimize congestion. So in a way, it is used in many, many fields, particularly in the field of science to provide simulation-based experiments. If you still feel quantum computers are just science fiction, kindly click the links provided here to witness the milestones achieved by the leaders in technology. This is the image of NASA's D-Wave quantum computer. Presented for you is IBM's quantum computer Atlas and Q system. 
some of the best videos and links explaining quantum computers are provided here so you can use it thank you very much